house majority leader eric cantor in an exclusive interview with our own rich edson rich Hey, good afternoon, Cheryl. We're just off a panel discussion here. Majority Leader Eric Cantor, thanks so much for joining us. Um, part of this conversation has been about the rhetoric. And Steve Case said that uh, we in Washington should focus less on press releases and more time on compromise. Do you think he was taking a shot at House Republicans there? No, I think Steve uh, came to the panel uh, with a sense that he believes we've got a very narrow window we can get something done. Uh, Steve Case indicated that it's his belief that the White House is interested in actually doing something to get things done, uh, to grow the economy and help small business people. Um, I'm all for it. And I've said since the president came to Capitol Hill and announced his jobs program that, you know, we're not going to agree with all of it. We don't agree with more stimulus spending. We don't think that worked. Uh, but there were plenty of things in his package that we've already passed in the House that we said, yes, we'll embrace that. Uh, the president was always about all or nothing. So hopefully Steve's right. Ho hopefully we'll be uh, Do you about... you think he's right? Uh, well, I'm, I'm optimistic. I mean, I, I think that if the White House and the president wants to do something, now is the time. Uh, and, uh, you know, before tax day, we're going to be bringing uh, to the floor a bill uh, that provides a 20% tax cut for small business people. Now, that's a no-brainer because it sends a signal that finally Washington understands that we need to focus on the private sector and growing our economy. Uh, and I'm hopeful that the president will embrace that, that the Democrats in the House and the Senate will join us in being there for small businessmen and women. That's how we're going to create jobs. That's how we're going to get this economy back to where it needs to be. Is that tax cut you believe more important than the payroll tax cut? Well, I, I think it's important that we resolve the payroll tax issue now uh, for sure. Uh, Would and, you do a uh, short-term extension uh, I wanna again? I, I want to see uh, the payroll tax uh, extend, holiday extended for a year. This is where the House Republicans were in December. Uh, we are not uh, a party that believes we ought to take more money out of the people who are working right now out of their paychecks. So you wouldn't do a temporary again? We, well, it's the onus is really on Harry Reid. Uh, and Harry Reid, um, I think, needs to finally step up and say he's for extending the payroll tax holiday for a year, stop all the uh, discussion now of 60 days. We can do this. This is difficult. It's just like Steve Kay said on this panel. We really can do this. These things are not um, uh, that controversial. Let's set aside those things that are and focus on what we can do. We, we've got an opportunity, I think, to, to uh, take advantage of the positive job numbers that existed last Friday and let's go. Let's all work together to grow the economy. Do you think it really needs to be paid for? Can't we just do the tax cut? Well, there's a, you know, there's an issue here that Washington um, has a duty to the uh, beneficiaries of the Social Security Trust Fund. Uh, and this is um, um, a payroll tax is just that. It is monies that go into the Social Security Trust Fund. We shouldn't be violating that fund. Uh, and you know what? I think most people do get that Washington spends entirely too much money. Uh, we can um, come up with some savings here, given the $3 trillion a year that Washington spends. We could come up with some savings so that we could allow the people who are out there with jobs um, know, let them know that their taxes are not going to go up. You know, we talked a little bit about this. You haven't uh, endorsed anyone in the Republican race yet, but if you could just comment on some of the language going back and forth about Bain Capital and this this uh, sort of odd argument going on within the Republican Party. It seems uh, more of a Democrat versus Republican issue. What have you th thought of the rhetoric? No, I, I think that the, what's very clear is that the individuals on the Republican side of the aisle have a very different philosophical view and vision for where we want to take this country than, than the president's. I think that's really what's clear. Uh, and um, what I'd like to see is more focus on the part of everyone, including the president, uh, is let's stop dividing. Let's stop going for division here. Let's go for multiplication. That's about growing the economy. Do you think the Republican language has been divisive just between Republicans in this uh, race? You know, I, again, I think that there is a firm sense among the candidates on our side of the um, that is reflective of a belief in the private sector that, that really we've sort of tried policies of stimulus, of overspending, of incurring more debt, um, of regulatory policies that actually reek of cronyism. We've seen they don't work, and that's why 
We want to try something different. It's sort of like people do in their everyday lives. If something doesn't work, you stop doing it and you try something new. That's why we're about a sensible regulatory policy, lower taxes for individuals and businesses. Uh, and let's go about growing this economy again. House Majority Leader Gary Cantor, thanks Thank so much you. for joining us. Cheryl? Back All to you. right. I, I, I'm glad you asked about uh, the endorsement, Rich. And you, you almost had him. I could see him thinking about it, Rich. <laughs> <laughs> Not quite. <laughs> Just a name. That's all we need. Rich Edson, thank you very much. Great interview, sir.